So today we're going to talk to you about the acting course at NIDA and how we structure the course, give you a brief overview of it, we'll flick through a few slides and then what we'll try and do is get to a point where you can all, um, as many of you have questions, can field them to us. Um, my name is John Bashford, I'm the course director of the acting course. I'd like to introduce one of our students, Evelina Singh. Um, Evelina is currently in the middle of her second year of training, and my colleague at the other side of the um, sofas is Katerina Moreitis, and Katerina is our head of voice, and the course leader for the uh, Masters of um, Fine Arts in Voice, uh, which will be running, we hope, in 2022. Lovely. Um, so, acting. Here we go. Um, many of you will have had some knowledge or looked online and, and seen that we run an acting course. And within the acting course, there is a, an acting stream and a singing acting stream. So on the slide up there is an idea as to the general coverage of the course, um, how, we, how we work as we put our actors together. And within that cohort, there are 24 in a cohort, there will be a number of actors who will have a specialization um, into singing acting. So the basic principles of the training is that we train through four disciplines, schools of um, acting, movement, music, and voice. And within those disciplines, there are a variety of techniques that are taught and shared with actors in order to help them build, if you like, a toolbox. Uh, there is no one way uh, that is right for acting, because there are no... Um, each actor, I would say, is an individual and a creative person in their own right. And so from our perspective, what's important is trying to give actors the opportunity to engage with a wide range of techniques so that they can find the things that will work for them um, and help them build a process that will take them forward as creative, flexible, adaptive artists and into, into the future. So our singing actors, um, basically the, 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 the simplest way to describe it is that all the actors do the same work and then at certain points in the timetable each week there are technically um, specific classes to do with the disciplines that are being followed. So for a singing actor that might be a one-on-one -on -one class which is to do with technique in terms of singing or developing repertoire in terms of the range of material that the singing actor might be working on or an afternoon class that might involve technical disciplines such as dance calls and working on the floor with, um, with song and storytelling through song. And for the actors, they will be doing commensurate work in terms of technical disciplines. So this, uh, this year we have done a deep dive into lab and working actions as a, as a method, um, taking that into some Lecoq. And we're currently working with our design students on a collaborative project, which is using nonverbal um, storytelling and communication and shooting that uh, for, you know, with, with film. That's all right. And it gives me great pleasure to um, introduce Karina Hodgson. And Karina is a member of our wellness team who um, look after and help support students through their training. So the structure of the course, um, three years. And how we do this is that the first year is really about the self. So who are you as the artist in, in, in the room? What do you bring? Um, as I said earlier, Every particular actor who joins the course is, is a unique individual. They bring their own sense of cultural self, um, their linguistic diversity, for instance. They'll bring their knowledges and their playfulness into the room. And, and one of the things that we have to try and engage with is how do you work? What are your habits? What are the things that might be getting in the way of clearer communication as an artist or as an actor? And part of the training through the four technical disciplines is to unlock that and grow a, a stronger sense of self-awareness in the artist. Because if you're self-aware, you, you have the capacity to change. Um, and if you're not aware of those ticks, of foibles, or, or so forth, you, it's very hard for you to actually develop your, your skill further. 
So we do that through a variety of, of things, and those are the technical classes, so we have tech classes, and then opportunities in the training to put those um, technical skills into, app uh, into application through scene work, scene study, working with writers, working on plays. In the second year, we assume that the actor has got a sense of self-awareness and is, a, is um, cognizant of the changes that they may need to be making in themselves. So what we look at in the second year is the idea of moving towards the other. How do I transform myself? How do I stand in somebody else's shoes without my prejudices getting in the way? How do I actually engage with a character um, that I may have no um, you know, personal experience or connection to? So that, that involves research. It involves um, applying technique, imagination, using body energies, using perhaps explorations in terms of um, meeting, interviewing people, et cetera, et cetera. So, so in the second year, we're really looking at um, moving actors away from the sense of who they are into more challenging areas. We, uh, we engage in an increase of material. So the actors will be engaged on workshops such as Shakespeare workshops a two-hour cut version of a play, which then we take out of the building into communities and schools. Um, we will do a, a Russian play project which looks at uh, naturalistic approaches to acting and the idea of uh, subtext and the hidden lives of characters. We have a comedy project which looks at how do we respond to cultural, social um, issues, perhaps, and things that we want to challenge. And then we finish the year with an exploration of a play where actors begin to take on roles and are through cast as a means of scaffolding themselves and getting them ready for their final year, which is the professional year. So year three, from our point of view, is, is your professional year. We start the year with an exploration of, the, of two plays from the American uh, repertoire and the idea here is to consolidate accent work for instance so students will be engaging with accents how do you use tongue placement how do you approach different accents so that your skills as um, for any of you who were at the earlier talk Joel was talking about the amount of American product that is being shot and filmed here the requirement the ability for actors to be able to um, move from their Australian accent to an American voice is really, really key, and it's a, it's a great way to um, you know, uh, continue craft. So, so at the end of a, the period with the American plays, we also shift into public productions. Um, so at the moment in the building, there are four public productions being shown. And this is an opportunity for the actors to work across all the disciplines in the organization. So they, the students will work with designers, with costumiers, with wardrobe, with technical and stage management personnel, with lighting designers, sound designers, set designers. Um, everybody in the building comes together, properties and objects. Uh, they all come together to create these pieces of work because actually that's the mark of the industry that they're going to wa walk into. Ours is a collaborative art form. We can't just survive on our own. We need to be able to work flexibly and adaptively with other people. So the public productions gives the students an opportunity to um, engage in, a, in as near to industry processes as possible by way of preparation for going into the industry, but also the chance to work collaboratively with their peers. We follow that in the third year with a screen project so, and, and this is a, an opportunity for students to shoot on location with a professional crew, a short film. They're usually two and a half minutes, one and a half, two and a half minute long. Original uh, material is created by our industry partners who are Boom Shaka Films. And this is, this is the culmination of the screen training that has been threaded through the actor training from the first year into the second, into the third. So it acts as a calling card, if you like, for industry. The final term it com it completes with another tranche of public productions and our showcase event, which is the launch pad for our students into industry. So at that particular event on this stage, something around the, last, uh, the second week of November, our, our actors will share short scenes 
um, show their show reels on the screen. We launched the website, and agents, casting directors, and interested industry guests um, come and watch their work, and and thereafter begin that process of perhaps signing our actors and um, casting and and engaging with them professionally. Throughout the training. One of the things that we have been very consciously moving towards is the idea of inculcating within the student the idea that they can be creative, self-generative artists. In the old days, the industry, the old days of the industry are long gone. The idea that you come to somewhere like NIDA or you go to um, VCA or QUT or WAPA and you finish your course and you get signed by an agent and the phone rings constantly. Um, sadly, those days are long gone. And I think what's really vital is the possibility for um, our actors to be generative artists. They can create content. So within our course, there are elements and projects that we're working on and putting into place that give them the opportunity to work with, with themselves, with their peers, to create small moments or um, material that, that can actually fire, if you like, their enthusiasm for creating, or, or building um, teams across the different cohorts at, at NIDA that could then take them into an afterlife from the training and begin that process of, of making work for themselves in those periods when the phone isn't exactly ringing off the hook. So, um, so that gives a broad overview as, as, as to the structure of the course um, and the form. We obviously will be very happy to give you further details as we, as we begin the conversation um, or answer any questions you may have. Um, I'm going to just flick on to a couple of other sites. I mean, there's a huge variety of very obvious um, career options for you as actors. But the beauty of the, of the training, I would say, is that the skills that you acquire are amazingly transferable. And, and graduates go into all sorts of different fields other than the, the traditional and the usual. Um, that was a, sh a still from one of our showreels that we shot last year. And if you're interested in having a look at the showreels, you can go on NIDA's website, look for the cohort, look for 2020, and, um, the, and find the actors there, and you'll be able to click on and, and have a look at the sort of short films that they've been producing. Um, here are some we prepared earlier. Um, so, so there's a, a, a terrific range of, of extraordinary talent that's come through uh, NIDA and are continuing to contribute to the artistic development of, of Australia and the world, actually. I mean, our interest really is, is the sense that we are local, but actually our graduates from all sorts of courses um, have a major impact globally. That was on one of our film sets. Um, yeah. The audition. This year, um, you may have heard, we are not charging any fee for the audition process. We're also following our first round uh, system from last year, which is an online submission. Um, that's just making sure that um, we actually uh, are protecting ourselves in case there should be a sudden flare-up of COVID and, and, and those sorts of things. So the online prep preparation is very similar to last year. There will be some lists of material up on, the, on NIDA's website. We should have that all completed by the end of next week, including a, 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 a selection of songs that students, uh, candidates can, can choose. And basically what we want you to do is film yourselves. Choose two pieces that you connect with, film yourself, and then upload them onto a Vimeo or a, a YouTube, and then connect the link from that into the application process. Um, there are some documents that you have to supply, or we ask you to supply. All of this information is available on the website. That's the painful part, what it costs. Um, and again, that, all, that information is available. And a few handles, should you wish to join the conversation, please do. And lastly, thank you. Cool. 
So we'd be very happy to take questions. Anybody got something they want to ask? And we do have a Slido um, online question system. So the question is, um, there's a lot of Hollywood production coming to Australia at the moment because of the, the condition of the, the global industry. Are we adapting the course um, or leaning into that in terms of um, engaging with students, etc.? I would say my answer would be um, acting is acting. And so within our training, the ability for the actor to... We use the mechanism, if you like, of, of theatre to prepare you to, to actually work across any platform. So really and truly, as a graduate of NIDA, you have an extraordinary opportunity to be seen for all sorts of work. Um, and, and the possibility of, of those American productions coming in just means that you're, you know, cab off the rank, as it were, from your agent. Um, and whether you get selected is, that's anybody's guess. Um, because it's a, a check, you know, what any production is looking for we can't control, but what we can do is prepare our actors to be able to be really nimble, dexterous, and capable of working in any field. Uh, I just wanted to add that in its 60 year history, uh, NIDA has produced actors that have gone to work in the US, worked here in Australia, worked across the globe on an international scale. And so we've always been preparing actors for the industry, the global industry, the international industry, not just the Australian industry. And I think that's a really strong thing about Australian actors. We're raw and we, we understand what it's like to have these, these uh, huge and large emotions that are required of both theatre and film. And I think we've done that. If you have a look at our, our list of alumni, there are a lot of them that do a lot of work in film, not only in Australia but across the globe. I'm always happy for that to happen. I mean, the guidance really is there for, um, to create a level playing field. Here are, here's a range of material that you can draw from. But then if you've got a strong passion and interest for something else, from my point of view, I'm very happy for you to, to do it. It's not exhaustive. We do say we would prefer you to choose from this list. And sometimes that's because some of the pieces that we put on the list will actually help us see the choices that are being made. But, um, but I think, I think we, we can be flexible. Yep. There's a hand there. It's a really good question. The world's in a little up, upheaval at the moment and uh, we were last year working in the same way as much of the world was on Zoom. I'm not going to lie to you, it wasn't easy doing embodied experiential learning <laughs> you know, on a computer. Long days just staring at a screen and we're very lucky here in Sydney and at NIDA that we are working face to face. We are taking all precautions necessary to keep our students healthy and safe during that time. And we currently have four shows, public performances, that are running at the moment. And like yourselves, the audience are wearing masks during those performances, sanitising, and we are maintaining 1.5 metre distance where possible. And I think we're managing really well and we're very lucky that we're able to be back in the building. And the fact that we're keeping healthy and safe practices has meant we've been able to do that. So we're very grateful to those at NIDA who made that happen. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we had to do last year was pivot like everybody in the world. 
to the online space. I think there were some great learnings from that in terms of realizing that actually people weren't able to cope with the level and rigor of training that we would like to have delivered because there's a sense of being isolated, because there's disadvantages in terms of internet access, stable connections, et cetera, et cetera. But we were very lucky that we were able to um, work with the government guidelines, bring in some very strong safe practices in terms of um, working health and safety, uh, working with distance, working in masks, and gradually as the risk reduced in New South Wales, we were actually able to do um, take on other ways of working in rehearsal rooms um, with and in gradually increase our numbers. So just to give you an example, last year towards the end of the, the academic year, the pr public productions, we had to have um, the auditorium spaced, and so you know you could have groups of people who could have three seats and then you had another three either side and, and all of that. We're now at 100% capacity in New South Wales for public venues um, and uh, we prefer to maintain the idea of, you know, for the most part wearing masks in, in the venues but I think you can quite happily go down to the STC and, and Belvoir and sit there without a mask or, or make a choice for yourself. Um, so I think um, we've been very lucky. Obviously, should there be another flare-up and the, the um, government advice changes, our responsibility is to take that advice and adapt so that we can protect staff and students and members of the public. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. There was a hand I saw there, yes. Uh, the minimum age is 18, so you have to be 18 years of old, but there's no upper limit. Uh, what we look for is people who are, uh, dislike the word talented, but the, it's the only word really to describe the idea of somebody who is flexible, as John was talking about earlier, able to be imaginative and creative, use text and language. The reason we say 18 and up is really you have to have the maturity uh, level to be able to take on such a rigorous training, and it is a rigorous training. We hear from 8.30 in the morning until 6.30 at night, and uh, sometimes it's even later in production terms. You might be here till 10.30, 11 in the evening, including homework and all sorts of other extracurricular activities like open day that requires you to be here. And so it's a really uh, tiring and extensive training that requires the whole human being. It's a holistic training. And so, yeah, that's why we require 18 and up. There was a question there and I'll come down. There was a hand, yes. Oh, yes, thank you. No. Yeah, and, and I think also you'll find that um, on the website it's HSC or equivalent. I mean, in real terms, it is about the encounter of the individual in the room, you, you know, with us. Um, that's really what's, what's important is what, have you, what are you bringing? Um, I think it was Stella Adler who said, talent is, is choice. choice Sorry? Talent is your choice in action. Your choice in action. So it's about the choices you're making in terms of your pieces and how you're able to adapt and, and, and take the training. For us, it's not about having a lot of good actors, you know, who get in to do the training. You're coming here to train, to perhaps become a better actor. What's important in terms of getting in to NIDA is the ability to receive a training. Um, if you are naturally contentious, this might not be the environment for you. Um, because if you're going to contend against something, you're not going to be able to be open enough to receive it, to let it do the work on, on yourself and to enable your own transformation. So that's, that's really um, one of the key elements, is actually it's not about being the best actor in the room. Um, we see a lot of very good actors in the room when we travel on our recalls, but actually it's the ability to be able to be transformative, to accept direction and, and, and change that's much more useful. Yeah, and part of the, the thing we look for is that you're able to adapt to direction, take direction, and that's that idea that you're able to take on the training. It's, as I said, three years of intensive training, and 
NIDA might not be the right place for you, it might be, there are hundreds of other ways into industry. And so we really do at Audition, in terms of criteria, look for imaginative response to text and language, can you take direction well, what do you bring to NIDA in terms of your cultural, your imagination, your spiritual, your emotional self? All of those things are part of what we look for when we look to uh, our criteria. Have you got a question? Yeah, yeah, come. So this is off the internet. <laughs> All right, if you are taking a gap year after high school, what would you recommend partaking in to strengthen yourself as an actor? Live. <laughs> Go and enjoy yourself. You can't travel. Well, you can <laughs> internally. Go yeah. and see this fantastic country. It's fabulous. I mean, get out, get out, get away, you know, from the bank of mum and dad, as it were. Um, they'll probably enjoy the rest too. But, um, but I think it's really important. Go away, travel, live, um, work, do things that you wouldn't normally do. Um, go and pick fruit. Go and, go and labour. Um, I think do things that are not necessarily the things you're used to doing. Uh, so that you, 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 you grow some other part of you. Um, read, go and see galleries, yeah. I would also add, go to the theatre yeah. and take classes, improvisation classes, voice classes, movement classes. Allow yourself to be immersed in as many different creative and imaginative art forms as you possibly can. And it also tests, you know, the commitment. Um, and that's really an important thing. There's a lot of pressure, I think, to, you know, here we are, the, the educational system force feeds us to a point of 18 and now you've got to have a responsible um, job and all of those sort of things and you've got to move on to the next thing. Why? Why not take some time away? Why not grow? Why not um, live a bit? Why not experience something in the world? Then, then and test the metal of your choice the temper of your desire to become an actor. Um, because if, if you find that it's actually the only thing you can do, it's probably the only thing you can do. And, and that's one of the benefits of taking time away from you know, the, the segue from high school to university or higher education. There's a real benefit, um, testing that this is actually the thing you want to do. Yeah, um, I was very nervous going into the auditions. I auditioned in 2019 before COVID and online auditioning. I was nervous because I thought that I didn't have as much experience as everyone else going into the audition. All the acting I did was in high school and then I spent three years doing a psychology degree and working in a pharmacy, so not acting at all. But um, yeah, that was my life experience, I guess. If you call it that, yeah. yeah. Lots of hands. I saw one at the back there, and then we've got two here. So the question for the for the panel is, how's the industry viewing formally trained as opposed to the instinctive actor? Is that fair enough? Yeah. Do you want to have a... Does the industry take a different view? Uh, I have no idea if yeah. the industry takes a different view. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. You, no. you take this I mean, one, I, John. I think that... <laughs> There are really successful actors who haven't trained, and that's something to recognise. Um, there, there are fantastic actors who haven't trained in a formal sense. Let's put it that way, in a formal sense. Informally, they may have trained um, and, and gained experience on the job, and that's, that's something that can happen, and um, if it does happen for you, and that's, uh, that's fabulous. The difference, I think, is that a formally trained actor at someone like NIDA will have a whole range of skills and will not just be... Um, limited, if you like, to one particular way of doing things. And I think that's the strength, perhaps. So th there, is, there is an advantage to going to an established course, and that is that the supposition at the end of it is you know how to act. 
So then the question becomes, will you fit the project? Are you going to be great to be working with in the room? Will you bring your creativity to bear on the project, etc.? So it, I think it'd be hard for me to make a, a prescriptive sort of definitive answer to that, but I do think there are a variety of ways in to industry. But you do actually have a series of tools by the time you finish a training at a place like NIDA that will actually take you through for the rest of your life. Because in a way, the habits of learning, um, I hope, you know, the habits of learning and constantly testing yourself and constantly wanting to develop your, your artistry, your instrument, your skills, that will go th seep into your bones so that it will carry you through your life, really. Oh, I was just going to add to that that the reason it's a difficult question to ask is, answer, sorry, is because the industry come to NIDA at the end of the three years and look to us to see what the next wave of, of young actors is going to be is the same as they do for a lot of drama schools across the globe. And there are many, many different ways into industry. And industry is always changing. It's changing mm. almost every day and at every moment. And it's really up to them, in a sense, how they view us. All our job, as John has said, is to give actors the tools to be flexible within a changing industry. And I think we do that really well. There was a question down here, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, I was just interested in hearing a bit more about your experience as a student, whether it um, what was matched your expectation or surprised you, like how you found the way they took the cohort. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we've got 24 in my cohort, and we spend Monday to Friday together, nine till six every single day. So, um, and for three years. So, no, I've, I've loved it. I've loved it. We've all created such a safe environment with the teachers and the supporting staff as well. Um, we've learned so much about the most random um, uh, uh, techniques that I didn't even think that we would get a hold of. And because of NIDA's connections, we've been able to get, especially during COVID, lots of um, professionals from the industry to give us talks on their experiences. So I think that was really beneficial as well, just to hear about that. And also on the other question, I feel like I'm very lucky to be here and experiencing this really draining, exhausting, but very rewarding um, uh, schedule because it will get me ready for the industry and the demanding, nature of doing so many shows in a week or um, going through some very exhausting rehearsal periods. So yeah, I think, yeah, I'm learning a lot, still have a lot to learn, but enjoying it. Okay, we have a number of questions online here about the audition process. So any tips for preparing and presenting the online, online audition and also any do's and don'ts throughout the process? Okay, so, the, so um, there, is, there is a lot of information online. So we prepared a document that actually says, can you produce your, your, um, your pieces? When you film them, can you produce one that's a mid-shot waist and a little bit above the head, one that's long shot? Uh, the, the, there's a lot of stuff there. We also had some graduates last year, not last year, the year before, create a, a, a little do's and don'ts video which is available that you can click on and it's quite fun. Um, you know, don't stand with a, you know, the, the, the window behind you and it's a bright sunny day because we won't see you if you're being shot like that. So there's all sorts of little, little tips and guides um, available for you. The most important thing I think I would say about the do's is this. Be yourself. Don't try and code switch. Don't change yourself into something you think somebody else wants. You're, um, it's you that the industry needs, not you interpreting what you think the industry needs. And that's the key, really. Um, and that's why I think it's vital that our cohorts come from a rich, diverse community which is what Australia is, and maintain that individuality and that sense of self. So in a way, when you're working on the pieces that you put together, celebrate you, your response to the work. That's the key element, really. Be yourselves. Be yourselves. Have some fun. Um, yeah, be yourselves. And choose maybe contrasting pieces. So there are some, some fun ones, there's some tough ones. Um, look for how you can find changes within the, 
within the pieces. Um, one of our colleagues, Gavin, who's the head of movement, talked about the idea that if you were to film, for instance, your your monologue, there's a way in which you might conceive of the storytelling through the uh, through the piece as being a, a series of four snapshots. And each snapshot would show a little something different about that character. So, so in your in your imagination, think about well, what's the way in which I can join up those dots between those photographs. So, I mean, that was just a, something that Gavin offered this morning as a as a way of thinking about it. Um, think about the sense that you're on a journey. I would say look for the changes in the in the pieces, and let's see those changes. Um, but just be yourselves. Spotted a hand. Yeah. Loads. Um, There's one there and one there. And then there. Yeah. I'm just wondering, when you say, that's for us to pull up today, when you say 18 years of age, does that mean 18 years when you start the course or 18 yeah. years at your business? 18 to start the course. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was right at the back, the lady in the Mac. So the question is, the content generation, um, do students perform their own self-generated material or do we provide material? It's a combination of both. So there are going to be some projects where, um, for instance, scene work. Uh, when Evelina was in the first year, she was partnered up with somebody uh, to do a scene project and between the two of them, they went off to the library, found a scene that they wanted to work on. And, and that... That's part and parcel of what we're trying to do here, is change the old way of these are the accepted texts and these are the things you, that are of value. It's actually about the artists, the actors themselves, finding the things that make sense and value to them, to them so that they will choose the material and work on it with us within the structure. The self-generated material, there are particular projects where they do write and they do generate their own material and they are perhaps, um, there's a project that happens in third year called Turning Points where the actors work on significant turning points in their lives. They thread a narrative through, they film it and create that as, a, as an in-house piece of work. So, so we're, we're constantly looking at the uh, ability of the actor to um, think about the the dramaturgy, if you like, the shape of the scene, how, how the story unfolds, and then how they can actually create that, that work. But when it comes to public productions, yes, we are often looking at um, established plays or new works. So, for instance, as part of our season, at the end of the year, we have Annie Washburn's Mr. Burns, uh, which had a very successful outing in, in New York and um, at Belvoir Street uh, a couple of years ago. We've got Nathan Maynard, First Nations uh, playwright from Tasmania. He's been commissioned to write a play for us, so there'll be a new piece of work. And then we'll look at a, an established writer like, uh, well, we are using Carol Churchill's um, Love and Information. So, so what we're always trying to do is sculpt and provide different types of um, theatrical opportunities for the actors. We also get a lot of chances to collaborate with other disciplines, including like the prop students, set design, costume, which is also great as well. Voice. And last year we got to create little scenes in uh, pairs. We wrote the scenes and um, organized the shots and then we got a professional film crew to film them. That was great as well. Well, that sounds like a question for me. <laughs> thought I was going to get through this whole thing just listening. Um, so I'm one of two councillors here at NIDA and I guess our kind of goal is to really try and balance this idea of um, building resilience within the students because particularly in this industry, knowing how to bounce and get back up is really important. So building that resilience but also having a sense of safety net around, particularly while they're at NIDA, um, and sort of teaching the skills of taking care of yourself in this industry um, and knowing how to, um, you know, separate yourself from the work because, you know, it's very embodied and experiential acting. Um, so 
it can be very easy to kind of get lost in that. Um, so the counselling and the uh, wellbeing part of NIDA is to sort of remind people that you're an actor, but you're also someone who likes to cook and read and swim and you exist outside of the work. So um, I think the, the idea of building a very positive mental health culture here at NIDA is mm. sort of at the forefront at the industry at the moment and um, it's something that I think is really important to start at this really roots level so that um, the students go into the industry prepared rather than sort of arrive and go, holy crap. This is tough. So that's sort of my... Is, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. We also have uh, the staff too, during classes, might prepare students for the work to come, give them ownership of the work so they can only go as far as they feel they feel safe and afterwards de-rolling. Um, the staff also are course coordinators so that students have a place to come and speak to us if they need to about something. And there's also a few well-being dogs in the building mm. so that students can cuddle a fluffy dog or take them for a walk, which also is quite valuable when they're having a little moment. So yeah. Extremely valuable, I back that up. Very. I love seeing the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, there's the lady there. I would say depth and breadth. Um, so, so it's the possibility of spending three years every day digging into yourself. I mean, in real terms, the, the challenge for the actor is in training is the encounter with yourself. Um, and, and, and what happens over a three-year training is that the course has been structured to take you on a journey over that period of time and to give you as many techniques and, um, and experiences as possible. Um, the diploma, in a way, takes you on a shorter journey and doesn't necessarily... Uh, you don't have the time to perhaps go into each area of discipline area in, in the depth that we, we have on the BFA programme. Absolutely, there are students, uh, there are members of, of our cohorts who have uh, been part of other programs. So for instance, there are a number of singing actors in our second year who actually did the Diploma in Music Theatre at WAPA, for instance, um, and, then, and then came to us. There are students who've done the acting course, there are students who've done the Aboriginal Theatre course at WAPA and, and have come to us. So, so setting yourself up in that way is, a really, is not a bad thing at all. And all those also yeah. from NIDA. We've got a few yeah. first years and second years who did the diploma courses at NIDA mm. as a bridging yeah. into the BFA. And, and students from NIDA's diploma courses have gone on the opposite journey as well. I mean, you know, I think in a way um, those courses that are, are pathway and enable um, students to consolidate skills, grow skills, build confidence can really help them, you know, step up. So the question is, how is it possible for candidates putting online submission to demonstrate perhaps their flexibility? I think what happens for us is that it's the same whether it was the first round in the room. In a way, what we would be doing is looking at the work and making an assessment on the, uh, and the judgment call at, at, at that level before really inviting them for the recall, which actually enabled us to, to, to dig in. Um, historically, the whole purpose of us going around the country really was about actually sharing skills, giving um, candidates the opportunity to watch, observe the work of others, share knowledge, etc., between us all, and, and then, you know, get the, the students that perhaps we, we felt were strongest or most ready for the training. Um, it is hard. But, but in a way, I would say, look at the advice that's given online in terms of how best to prepare. Tell your story. And, and, 
and then you know the members of the various panels who will look at those um, videos will will put people forward um, for us to look at in in terms of our recall process. It, it is different. I have to say it is different. And and just anecdotally, last year there were what was very interesting for us was the learning that sometimes um, what we perceived as confidence and skill on a on a screenshot didn't necessarily translate into the room when we encountered um, candidates and, the verse, uh, and, and vice versa. Yeah. It's a couple of questions there. So, yes. Uh, yes. And then the gen person behind. Thank you. Great question. Um, the question was, when, when will we, or when will a person be ready to shoot their piece so that they're not over-prepared or under-prepared? You're the only person who can make that judgment. Um, I would say don't do it too many times. And, or practice and practice, and then throw it away, and then do it, get it done. Um, I can't really say it's six times. Do you know what I mean? It's all eight times or whatever. It will be what it what it is for you. But I think just feel confident. It's it's actually when you're feeling confident that actually no, I think I've done that. That's done. Then then leave it leave it alone, because it is possible to overwork your your audition pieces um, and take the life out of them. Yeah. And there was somebody just behind you. Hello. Um, we take a view that actually it's a good time to reinvent yourself. So some students do come with agents, and, and what that might mean is that um, they, take, they go on hold in terms of those agents' books. Uh, it is impossible to audition and be in a training. If you've already got a connection to industry, then it may be good to keep going with, with that. But um, while you're at NIDA, we, we don't allow you to do auditions, etc., until you're in your final year. And, uh, and at that point, it's very much, um, is it a good, is it a career-defining opportunity, really? It's, that, al yeah. it's also about uh, presenting yourself to the industry whilst you're in training, because the industry uh, keeps all these things on file, so we see them all the time. And what happens is you might, your habits and your patterns of performing might be cemented further if you keep going back outside the industry rather than be immersed totally in the training. Do you mean your past experience? Does it matter? Right. Or? Oh. Not particularly. Uh, to be to be blunt, I, mean, I think what we look for is the what you do in the moment, in in front of us. Really, that's what what counts because um, because we'll have candidates who have left you know, school maybe four, five, six years ago. So it doesn't really matter. It's really about what happens in the room on the day. Yep. Lovely. No. 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 No, Right. In terms of applications, um, how many generally apply, and how many actually have gotten into? Yeah. Last year, I got my figures wrong earlier uh, today. We actually had 866 applications due to COVID, so that was a dip. Um, I would imagine this year 
that there will be more than that. We normally average around 1,000, you know, 1,100. That's the number of applications for 24 places. Um, but at recall, we tend to see something in the region of about 300, maybe 400 um, people at recall. It will vary year on year. Um, but last year was, was obviously, as we know, it was a peculiar year. Um, but we did manage to see a lot of people in the room, which was great. Um, and, and from my point of view, the best way to do it. Um, yeah. The paradox of acting. <laughs> um, you will convey who you are through the choices. The other thing to bear in mind is that um, the cards aren't all stacked this side of the table. Don't forget you're auditioning us. And I think that's really, really important to think about is the sense that um, do you actually want to come and work with us? You know, will it, are we perhaps people that you chime with or the work or the way in which we work, does it chime with you? I think that's really, really important. Um, anybody who comes to an audition, you know, for a training is looking to invest time and money and a lot of it. Um, and I think what's really important is you've got to find the right community to be in. So it's really important to think it's not all just one way. They, you know, want me. Think also about, you know, actually, do I want them? <laughs> I think that's really important. It's um, you know, it's 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 useful. I'll just add to that that the character is within you, because it has to come from your voice and your body. So what John is referring to is we get a lot of demonstrative behaviour. I'm going to demonstrate the character to you. So put something on top of the text and language, rather than allow the thoughts and the text and the language to live within you and you respond to them as you might respond to any thought. So that's what it refers to. Not that you're not transforming, but you're transforming from you. You're not, tran you're not putting something on top of the text that you think the character is like. That's what he's referring to. Lovely, thank you. There's a hand I saw there. Yes, do as many courses as you possibly can. As we said earlier, go to the art gallery, read, read and read more. Uh, go to the theatre where possible. There's loads of theatre online thanks to uh, the COVID-19 situation. So you can actually access National Theatre Live and all sorts of different wonderful pieces of theatre across the globe. So do as much as you can. And as John said earlier, allow yourself to live and have your heart broken and all those sorts of things so that when you come to NIDA, you can access some life experience. It's very important really because it is such a rigorous and intense training. And what we aim to do is not to teach you voice or teach you movement or teach you acting, but teach you a sense of awareness, who you are and how you are able to change, as we just talked about over here with your question, from yourself to other. Because if you are using yourself as the instrument, in that holistic approach, you need have to have something to draw from. And if you don't have anything to draw from, it can be really difficult to understand a character and what they've been through with limited life experience. So get as much experience as you can. Yeah. And there are a variety of um, short courses available, very obviously, NIDA, <laughs> through Open, runs a whole suite of uh, courses around the country. And if you're Sydney-based, there's the NIDA studio, which operates on weekends as a way of bu building and developing your skills. Um, and I think in um, Melbourne at the Guild buildings, down in the Arts Precinct, there are short courses that run on Saturdays and the weekends as well. The Hub as well. And the Hub in is a good place in the Sydney and 16th Street in Melbourne, I would say. Um, yeah. A lot of my cohort auditioned multiple times to get in. Someone auditioned six times until they got in. So it's just, just keep auditioning, keep, keep trying. Oh, lovely, yes, sorry, didn't see you.
So, yeah, certainly. So, so the, the recall or the callback, uh, the question is, what is the callback? Um, really, the recall on the callback system is, we, let's say we've got 1,000 first round online submissions. We will have filtered probably, say, 700 um, that aren't necessarily suitable at this moment in time for recall. Recall is our ability to go into a room with a group of students and start to work their pieces and put them through their paces. So how that normally works is that the panel goes on the road and we will have a, a venue that we will invite a group of students to attend and we do a class. We warm them up, so Katarina very often or one of our um, um, students will do a voice warm up. It's usually me. Up. It's usually <laughs> Katarina. Um, play some games, loosen people up, um, get them ready for the experience. And then what we will do is we will watch the first audition piece through, work the second piece, and then make a decision on who we'd like to spend some more time with. So our third round frequently happens in the afternoon, or depending on the set of circumstances later in that session. So last year, because of COVID, we were doing those two pieces quite early, and then, um, again, asking a number of people to stay back to work a third piece. Um, and, and from that, uh, that bit of work, we would then be able to put them on a short list or not put them on a short list. And when we say work the piece, we mean that we give you direction, we change the given circumstances, you might be standing on your head, you might be asked to, as we said earlier, play a kindergarten teacher if you're a uh, lady, I can't say the word, can I? It's in the theatre. Yeah, uh, a character in a play. And so <laughs> you, you, you really get worked in that way to test uh, what your abilities are in terms of taking direction and openness to the training. Lovely. I think we've got time for two more questions, and then I think that's... We're at time. Sorry? We're at time. I'll be in the acting hub till 4.30, yeah. so if anyone has any other questions, I can answer them yeah. in the actors' hub. Thank you, Evelina. Lovely. Thank, Thank you, you very everyone. much for coming and um, sharing your time with us today. We look forward to hopefully seeing some of you in the future. <laughs>